The scope of your memoir. What's right for you? How much time and energy are you willing to give to writing your memoir? The more honest and insightful you are in answering this question, the more pleasure you will derive from your writing and the greater the satisfaction you will find in preserving your stories. The scope of your writing ambition is likely to change over the next months. Often this change is in favor of more rather than less of a memoir. If you can formulate a realistic writing goal for yourself, remember to under-promise and over-deliver. Doing so may well save you frustration and disappointment later. Do you have a definite range of experiences you want to write about in your memoir? These are examples. What summer was like at your grandparents. What your experience were in army boot camp. Your children's birth stories. Funny stuff that happened when you were a kid. Because this list of short topics reflects your ambition, then you have a clear set of parameters in mind to work within. It may be possible for you to write your limited number of stories in a few short months with the help of a writing guide, such as Turning Memories into Memoirs, a handbook for writing life stories. When people get hooked on life writing, they often find they expand the scope of their life writing ambitions. But perhaps you want to write about something more comprehensive rather than just definite experiences. Perhaps you want to write about your career, how you rose from bank teller to bank president. Or perhaps you want to write the entire scope of your life and of its hero's journey. What might interest you is your family's life since the 19th century to the present. Or you may want to record your community's history, its social, economic, and psychological past. If this list of large extended experiences interests you, you should plan to continue working for many months or even years. You need a long time to research your material and write about it extensively. Pacing your writing is important if you are to succeed. If you overreach, if you attempt a too extensive project, you may be exhausted by your ambition. Instead of being a joy and a challenge, the work may feel full of demands and responsibilities. You'll grow to resent or dread the writing, and you may even feel like a failure. You'll be very susceptible to giving up. On the other hand, if you underreach, that is, if you set too easy a goal for yourself, you may find the job not challenging enough to continue. If you don't go deep enough into the why of your history, if you avoid the difficult issues and events, if you record just facts and not feelings, you may find writing your memoir unsatisfying and even a bit boring. The demands of your life, work, relationships, responsibilities, will rightly seem more worthy of your attention, and you'll soon abandon your writing project in favor of quote-unquote life. The best choice is to approach life writing as you might approach gardening. Make your project the right size for your energy. Neither too large to accomplish, nor too small to satisfy you. Keep your writing where it can give you both regular daily pleasure and booths. Fill it with the flowers you find most beautiful and the vegetables you most love to eat. These are, of course, your self-exploring and self-expressing stories. Your project will be nurtured on a regular basis if you write in this way. You'll be rewarded with many benefits of life writing and will regularly maintain your commitment to turn your memories into memoirs. Access your work regularly to maximize your writing success. From the start and continually throughout your writing project, ask yourself if the scope of your ambition and the shape your work is now taking are appropriate for you. I have seen many writers wander away from their goals and lose their enthusiasm as their projects either grow out of bounds or remain superficial. Here are some action steps to guide you about what you can do next. 1. Next year, or the year after that, would you be happy to have written? 
What will make you say, good work? I'm so glad I devoted my time to doing this memoir. 2. Make a rough timetable for writing the memoir you want to write. This is a prescription more than a proscription. This timetable is a working document and you will be changing it regularly, always in favor of better support for yourself. Often, the end time is a family or a personal celebration or anniversary. How much fun it would be at your family reunion next year to be able to hand out a memoir of your parents or of your grandparents. 3. What daily schedule would work for you? Make one that under-promises but does not trivialize your commitment. If you think one hour a day is what you can do, don't try to up it to one and a half hours. Keep your schedule at one hour a day. If on any given day you can do more than one hour, do so. In conclusion, whatever you do today, write a bit on your memoir. Music